the next exercise is now to place a point on that point by setting the horizontal work plane of the existing point, placing that. Naturally, Revit is warning us and saying that there are two identical points in the same place. Uh, yes, we do know that, and this is the point itself. So what I will be doing, I'll give that point a, um, a, a parametric offset value. We'll just call it offset. Um, yeah, we'll just get that right. Offset value. I'm still going to put this under data. I'll give it as instance. It can be typed, but um, it's there. So, um, so let's just test it. If we can give our offset value, we'll say um, 100 mil at this stage. Okay, and that's that's flexing right. So. Then we'll go and repeat that exercise. I'll do it once more before um, I pause and continue with the rest. I'll just we'll turn the reference planes on to always. Untick the normal so we get all the reference plane. It's shown. We'll pick our point. We'll set our, by using tab key, setting our point, which is OK. Now, select point and obviously we want that to go to the opposite side as a thickness so then I will be um, I will be creating another offset parameter which I'm going to call this one offset say negative and put it under data group for the formulas so then we've got that. So what I'll do, go back to the family types, and what I'll just say, offset really equals to, to the thickness of our material. So we'll just place that and apply. So that's the thickness. And then the offset negative itself will be negative value of our offset parameter. So once we apply that, so now we've got We've got those two points risk corresponding to the thickness of the material that we will be using. So uh, then we'll repeat that information around. I'll just pause the video again. Okay, now we have all, all the points around around the points. As you can see, it's been placed as an offset parameter, which is uh, driven by the thickness. Now I'll go to back to the reference lines and then drive my secondary frame for the surfaces of that material that we will be using. So just repeat that on this side as well. Some people might be wondering why I didn't really um, extrude the top top panel and just arrive the same um, result rather than doing this long way of doing all that. And I guess I can encourage you to test that, 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 that you could see how that works. The problem with that is the, uh, the points um, themselves, if they're relating to the, to the points that they're offsetting from, they're uh, far more stable about keeping the geometry intact in, in various uh, difficult curvature forms versus an extrusion always wants to be perpendicular to its original surface, so it hasn't got enough flexibility in it. Um, so, uh, and that, that was one of the critical points of putting really this family together, is actually by creating these two surfaces to create the thickness of the material as such. Um, so moving on, just we'll do the, um, select the lines and create the material. And um, similarly, we can do the same for the for the middle sections. Create the form, and then now for these guys, we really need to draw our second circle um, in a circle. So the big circle was just to basically get to get the sort of tangent relation um, to to drive this this component or the geometry up the top. So there are two ways of doing this. I could either, I'll just change 
change my technique slightly. I'll just place a point, if you like, in, in the middle of the reference line that it's originally part of the template. And then I will draw a circle by selecting the reference plane of this. Turn that into a dimension and apply the small circle parametric value. So then I could pick the original line itself as well as that and um, and create create the form and once the form is created I'll just select the form and I'll in that form I will just say log profiles uh, basically the reason I've done that so it's is when it flexes it will keep its uniform size right across the cylinder rather than just changing the middle part uh, going in and out so uh, so that's just a, another little technique or tip uh, we'll do we'll do the same again in the center uh, place our circle by selecting surface there. Oh, that happened to be a model line instead of reference line, so we can just swap that around. Um, so now we, I tend to work with reference lines so I can keep the original geometry at all times and uh, just create the solid form. Once the form is created, just lock the profile of that form. So um, that's basically basically it for our component. I mean, I have taken in the example is just filled in these areas as well, so I can actually get the continuity continuity of the form sort of wrapping around. Uh, but just the uh, given the length of this this video, I'll just skip that part. I'll um, load that into the project. Of course, we do have no project, so let's open a um, open a what I call it a basket case uh, template, which is basically a um, it's a, it's a, again, a bunch of curved reference line uh, with the reference line that we will revolve around to create our basket. Um, so we'll just select both lines and create the form. Yes, we want it to 360 revolve, so we've just got a, a basic basket has been created. So I'll just go and select the surfaces of that form and divide the surfaces. Uh, as we used it before, I'll just use one and a half step pattern. And of course, there's a bit of irregularities in the amount of. Um, so we'll just go uh, maximum spacings, just make 1500 in a U grid and apply. So that should even out a bit more. And the next thing problem that I could see obviously that surface uh, stitching with that surface is the um, the pattern needs to be moved so I'll just select the surface and I'll just indent that pattern by one and as you can see now it's got the same relation make sure the other one is hasn't been yes it is okay well we'll change that as well uh, I guess what I could have done I could have just moved the top one instead of moving two bottom ones but anyway um, so now we've got the basic pattern regular enough working and next thing we'll just select our surfaces again and we'll just apply I'm just using the one that I prepared earlier that it has those little areas that in between is filled in um, as I mentioned earlier on and uh, now we'll just apply apply the pattern so it's taking its time 15 percent it, it is a quite a complex complex pattern to generate and voila so uh, just looking ar around very nicely everything is working and the component is quite quite nicely uh, following the curves that it's been created earlier on and uh, basically once we're rendering this is this is the um, end result be achieved and I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to show you other parts of the conference that I just uh, was quite 
well received. Thank you.